Wobble Wobble Wobble. This is Town Town HJ with the kicking of sounds in London Town. Just opening up my, my Diet Pepsi for my Diet Coke break. Um, you're going to break it. You're going to break your Ista. I'm going to tell you how not to. Don't go away. I think I look good in black. I should wear black more often. It's very slimming. I think I like it. <laughs> so, I have to apologize. This is a bit of a clickbait thumbnail, uh, but, but bear with me. I'm trying to make a point here. I had, and I totally forgot now, a piece of paper is upstairs in my bedroom. Um, one of my uh, posters on my, one of my, uh, my threads asked a relevant question about ISTA. And uh, in my many years of working with ISTA and on BMWs and stuff, no one's ever asked that question. And it's a relevant question. We just maybe assume. So the question is, well, what do you think? 50-50 chance you're gonna break ISTA? You're gonna brick your car? You're gonna break your laptop? Well, there are three things involved here. Computer, BMW, and ISTA, and they're all kind of connected. First of all, if you remember back in the day, um, and I'm talking about really, really, really back in the day when you had hard drives and servers with uh, uh, big monstrosity things, you had to shut them down in a certain way. You had a special shutdown procedure, and it allowed all the systems to shut down properly, it allowed a hard drive, the hard drive is like a, a number of disks which is spinning and each one has got like a, a reader and what happens it, it takes it, it parks the head. You used to have a, you used to have a command to park the head. It's similar to uh, USBs uh, and if you have a USB drive, you can cl right click and say, um, what's the word now I'm looking for? Remove safely, that's it, remove safely. So you can actually remove it with cause of corruption. So this was a thing, right? This also then worked with laptops as well. The older laptops is before you put your laptop away, even though you were moving it around, you had to shut it down and it would essentially park the, the, the drive, the, the, the head, the, the read in the head. So you wouldn't crash. So when you started the machine up, crash is actually a term where it means the head hits the drive, it crashes into the, you know, into the plastic, in the round circular plastic, like, like a CD. That's where you get the term crash from, or that's where it originated from, okay? So you had to do that kind of thing. Now I'll move forward to say Windows 7, 10 and 11, okay? So Windows is such a, program that now generally speaking you know really that people are going to just shut the machines off right and they've got certain ways that even if you shut down the machine it will take a little bit of time to shut down you notice if you ever hit shut down windows it'll take a while to shut down because it's doing its stuff it won't just shut down if you want to force a hard shutdown you have the button you press it and keep it pressed and eventually it'll go Ding! and you'll hear the drive Ding! go down okay that's not advisable, but generally speaking, there's so many processes, so many things happening in Windows that generally speaking, it's very difficult to break Windows in that, in that way. Um, also, uh, sometimes when you have updates, it will say, don't shut down until it's ready to shut down. You know, warning, because it could corrupt. But even then, I've had machines where people have shut the machine accidentally and they've still been fine. Okay, so why is this shutting down so important? Let me give you an analogy which will kind of bring this into focus. If you think of your the computer's hard drive, right, as a, as a book, right, so you have an index, so you say page one, page two, page three, and if you want to say go, if you, you, when you pick up a book, usually you look at the index and you go, right, I want to look at this bit, okay, that's some page, chapter four, page five. So you turn to chapter, uh, chapter four, page five, and you go, all right, it's there. Now, just imagine that book, right, is just a whole bunch of papers, right? Shutting down windows by pulling the plug or pressing the button is the same as going wee and throwing the papers and hoping it will fall back in the same place, right? 
Windows needs to know where each page of information is, or which thing thing is. It's called a FAT table, F-A-T, FAT, alloc uh, file allocation table, FAT. And with the newer machines, it's FAT32, right? Or NTFS, NT file filing system. Okay, I think that's NT filing system. Okay, so it has to know where each file is, right? Each program, each JPEG, each dot text text field. And there, if you look at the old um, programs which used to frag, used to run defrag because a, a, a program wasn't necessarily all in one place. It was built all over the place. So it would go here to there to there to all over the place. So it needed the fact table to know where it is. So what could happen is if you shut it down without closing the book properly, it may not know where the file is and then you get corruption. You try to run a program and it can't run it. Okay, That's why or machines and programs you have that ability to shut down okay nowadays generally that doesn't happen okay but technology wise that is essentially what happens okay now let me get another slurp right BMW let's talk about that for a little bit <sighs> Ista Rheingold Win XP, is it Win XP, something, Win, Wink, Wink, Wink P or something? There's a whole suite of programs around ISTA. ISTA is not just a, uh, uh, a, a single program. When you, when you load up ISTA, it's a whole wealth of stuff, okay? It is essentially the, the BMW program to maintain the car and it allows you to log onto the machine pull up data from the from the car so vin number specs it allows you to interrogate the car for faults it allows you to for example run test plans okay that's how bmw diagnose your car when you take your car to a dealer right for say spark plugs they i guarantee you that the tech knows exactly what is not working what needs to be done but they follow a test plan it says one do this two do that three four five there's a test plan they must follow because if there's an issue that bmw will say have you followed the test plan okay if you haven't then you've not done it properly they have to follow the test plan okay so that's why 99 percent of the time they can fix your car because they, they 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 follow a test plan to logically eliminate the issue Try this, if it isn't this, that, if you look on the forums where they say, my car won't start, people will say, try the battery, try this, it's the relay, it's this, it's that. Bullshit! You need to follow a certain plan. You've got, say, 10 points on the plan, you either start at one or start at 10 or start in the middle and it work either way out. But usually you go one, two, three, four. That's the longest, but that's the bit that works. Okay, so, uh, and BMW has allows you to run test plans and also with the ISTA software you can actually click on something and you'll say okay this is a picture this is a circuit diagram this is what this fuse does this is how you do this and also it has the ability to talk to BMW head office to, to talk backwards and forwards with whatever it does it's it's just not a manual it's just not a code reader if you just want a code reader go get an OBD2 or Bimalink or Bimacode or whatever, but it's not ISTA, right? That's why every time, if you're really serious about your BMW, you need ISTA because it's the only thing you can't do is talk to other things, right? So that being told, BMW ISTA is copyrighted by BMW. It's not for you. You're not supposed to be using it. It's hacked software. What you have and what I have is hacked software. It's copied. Okay, BMW license out. Now, actually, uh, previously, uh, except I think BMW on something called ISTA Next, I think. And also the newer versions of ISTA are subscription. You have to have a license and all kinds of stuff. I haven't even looked into that. Because luckily my, my car is fine on the version I have. Right, but the older ones, you have to load up ISTA, you have to load up all the databases and everything. It's a big whole hullabaloo. Right, it's not just one simple easy thing and you have to have to make sure this DLL is and this framework and all kinds of stuff. It's not easy. Even me as in being IT tech, I shudder at having to uninstall and reinstall. I just re-image and copy and re-put the image back on again. Right? So, um, so 
this is what what history is. It's, it, it's, it's a massive program, and it is copyrighted of BMW. You're not supposed to have it. Okay, well, you can have it, and we all have it, but you and me have a copy of the program. It is propriety, 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 I can't say the word, to BMW. Okay, it's a hack. The only people who should legally and lawfully have BMW is that is BMW themselves and licensed people like independents who have bought ISTA right now when you buy ISTA there's different versions and people make copies and you get it out on the web that's how we've got it but it's hack software right so understand that BMW ISTA is just for BMW techs to use right Let's get on with that kind of point. When you're a BMW tech, you go to a BMW school to learn how to fix BMW cars, right? And yeah, obviously there's other things involved, but that's what it is. And I'm, I'm sure they get learn how to use this to sort of say, okay, connect this to up and follow this and go here and there and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they're the ones that use this stuff, right? So when we try to do things on ISTA, we try to, for example, there are certain ways that you have to connect ISTA. Do you know that you have to have a 100 uh, amp power supply connected to your car in order to do the work you need to do, right? You can get away with it, of course you can. I've got a 45 amp and sometimes you don't even need that. But if you see sometimes on, on a lot of the uh, forums, people say, oh, well, I can do that. I've, I've just connected up a battery charger, my, my battery charger. Or I start the car, leave the car running, or I just use a battery. You're going to brick your car. And there has been so many people who have posted on, um, I'm getting this error, blah, blah, blah. And the first question you ask is, how did you do it? I said, well, I was using the battery charger. And so many people have said, you've bricked it. You're not supposed to do that. So when you go through and use ISTA, when they take the car and they put the charger on, I know this because I've talked to people, right? I've talked to techs. They put the charger on. They get into their version of ISTA and do this and that and the other. Now, while if they do bits and pieces the wrong way, if they happen to screw things up, which is very rare, they can always load, re, reload the car back up. They'll make a backup and they'll load it back up again. If you or me make a mess up and we brick the car, we then have to run to people who know about how to restore the, the files or whatever, re-back up the car. Right? It's a big, big thing for us. But for these techs, it's easy. Oh, I, I blew this. I, I did this. Oh, okay, just reload the car. You know, or whatever it is, right? So, BMW, ISTA, isn't for you and me, right? So, if you make a mess up, if you screw something on ISTA, right? Down to you, baby. The first thing, if you, say, for example, try to program up something or do this or that or the other, and you then take the car in, whether it's under warranty, first of all, one, they know you've been in Twister because there are logs they can look at. I don't even know how they do it. Someone may be able to explain to me, but they can tell if you've gone in, whether you've cleared codes, whether you've done anything on Ista. They can tell easily. So they'll say, we can see that someone went in, changed this program. We can fix it, but it's going to cost four grand. What are you going to do? You take your car back, which is bricked and you can't start it. So understand that about ISTA. It is a BMW program. Now, if you ever go into BMW, I, I haven't done that recently, but I remember the first time I took my BMW in, spoke to one of the SAs, the SAs came out with the with a, a tablet live thing and put this thing. So, so yes, sir, I can tell you need to do this, we need to do that, and you're due for this and blah 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 blah. Um, should be ready for you in wherever. He was interrogating my car from his laptop. ISTA is not designed to run on your Windows machine, although it can. It's actually for technicians to use. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they use it in their offices and whatever, but generally when they're diagnosing stuff and working stuff like we do, they pull up a tablet. They switch it on and it's a dedicated tablet. Well, I'm saying to you, I don't know, I'm assuming it is. Because I know one person told me with the, the laptop, make sure, right? Make sure that you um, um, 
have it as a standalone. Don't put any other crap on there. No antivirus, no nothing. Just the machine. Otherwise, it, I just, it's, otherwise you'll have issues. And I'm sure they may have other things to do with ISTA on, on that tablet. But essentially, they've started up, they press a button, they're gone. They hook up, right? Maybe they have a dongle which works off um, uh, Bluetooth or something, right? And then when they're finished, I don't know, I'm assuming they just shut it off. Right, or they have a uh, the sh shut off button, and I'll tell you a bit more on that, right? And they just disconnect and boom. But if they disconnect accidentally while they're in the middle of doing something, and this is the thing I, I, I meant to say, and maybe, no, I'll leave that for a minute, okay? Just hold that thought, okay? So they'll shut down and go, right? So it's, it's, it's not, an, not an issue, because they, they, it's their tool. If they break something, they know how to fix it. They have to fix it, right? So it's designed to work on a, a tablet running some operating system. Okay, a cut down version of Windows, maybe Windows CE or something, right? So um, that's that. If you look, even if you look at ISTA, you, there's a bit on there which says keyboard. You hit keyboard and the keyboard comes up because there's no keyboard, it's a tablet. It's a freaking tablet, guys. So taking when you put ISTA onto a Windows laptop, you have all other crap on there running, okay? And that may interfere with how ISTA works, okay? So, um, generally speaking, and the answer now coming up is, can you remove the plug and just go? The answer is yes, with a provisor. Yes. In 10 years, I've never broken anything. It's a proviso, and I'll tell you about time. So basically, on it, and I'm gonna actually pull up, load up ISTA on my laptop. I can't, I've already pre-done this, and it's not gonna show you on the machine, on connected to the car, but it's gonna show you ISTA and various bits and pieces. So from that video, you will see there is no exit. You cannot end the program. There is no exit button, right? So if you want to end ISTA, you can't. I mean, you, you go, let's say you go into operations and fault finding codes and you clear the codes and you X, 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 X out of it. But when you're actually at the front screen of ISTA, you've asked a question, so you know, at the front screen, you can't exit out of that. You can't, well, you can, but there's no exit. There's no end program tab. There's no icon like if you know on windows uh, like uh, win, um, uh, excel at the top it has file you hit file and down it has exit log off save all that kind of crap it doesn't have that on ISTA. it does have on the top right hand corner an x a red x when you hit x on whatever screen you're in it closes that screen on the last screen you hit that x and it ends the program right so what you may find is a couple of things. If ISTA is doing something in the background, depending on what you've asked it to do, and I've seen this, and even I went and I went to kill a program because I didn't want it to do what it was doing, so I hit X, 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 X. You can do start, go to Control Alt Delete, Start Manager, and you'll see it's to run, you can end the task. On one of the occasions I did that, it remembered where it was, and when I went back into it, it said, background process is still in process or something please wait so it it definitely there are protection devices in there to stop you screwing up but let's just say for example you're running a test plan you're running some coding or something no don't pull the dongle out don't shut the machine off because that may not be a good day which is why you want a 100 amp power supply and you want your your machine backed up and that's why if you're using a freaking phone you want it on airplane mode right People can do all these kind of crappy stuff, right? But if you're not doing it the right way, when things go wrong, then you're going to cry, right? You've, you've, you've trashed your 55 grand's worth of BMW, right? So if it's doing something, generally speaking, if you hit X and try to kill it, it will say, please wait background process in operation or process in the background process running or something. Okay? So in that case, you wait. Once it's done it, it will say it's done. On the very, very uh, slim chance that it's crashed, then you have to do a control or delete and just pray that you're fine. 
right? So you end Easter that way, okay? So as I was saying earlier on with BMW, if BMW accidentally um, pulled the cable when it like shouldn't have, and it's in the middle of doing something, they're going to go, oops, John, can you just reload the car? Because they've got all the stuff there. You and me don't have these files. I mean, I guess there's some people who are uh, up there in the BMW uh, amateur world and they know how to do that. But likes of me, I don't, I couldn't do that. I'd have a brick car. So if BMW make a mistake pulling things, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to tell you how to properly shut down and I'm going to show you. So first of all, you're in your BMW screen, you've pulled your codes and you hit, have the X at each uh, screen. Uh, at the top of each thing that you're into. Once you've finished doing what you've done, it says, okay, this is the fault code, this is what you need to do, you hit X. If it allows you to end that screen, it will just go to the next screen, back. If not, it will say, please wait, then you wait, okay? Once it's finished, hit the X, hit X, keep going until you're at the first screen, hit X again, right? Now, at that point, it should shut down, depending on what it's doing. Now, if it doesn't shut down, and it just keeps on going for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Open up Control or Delete, look up Task Manager, you will see it's the GUI, uh, Graphical User Interface, and see what the um, CPU is running. If it's running CPU, then it's doing something in the background. Don't end it, okay? But if it is, isn't doing anything, then you can just end the task and it will shut down. Once you shut ISTA down, Right, then what I would then do is I would unplug my dongle or my OBD2 cable and that's it. What you shouldn't, what is best practice is, and also connecting, and let's talk about connecting. Which is, what you should do is power up your laptop, okay? Let that power up, plug in the OBD2 into your car, right? Now connect that up to your laptop. Okay, then you hit connect and it will try and make a connection, right? That's the way I do it. I mean, I guess what you can do is you could start your machine up, connect the USB into there or the Ethernet cable and then into the car and then try connect, okay? It both would work. But when you're finishing, what I do is I leave everything connected, everything powered up and I shut down ISTA. Once that is fully shut down and is not running, then I can safely pull the cable from the car end, okay? And the reason you pull it from the car end is in case you, when you're pulling it from the, from the, uh, the laptop, if you've got an Eno USB, while you're pulling it, you could spike. Possible, it is one in a million chance, but you could do. So always remove from the car, then pull the other end of the cable, okay? And always try to get the cable in like, like that, right? Don't kind of wiggle it. And the same thing with the Enet or the USB. Just try and push it in nicely and then both ends and you're fine. So I know it's been a bit of a long story, but really need to know know that stuff if you're asking questions like that and, I, and it, will, it will help you. So basically, let's, let's shorten this down. One, BMW is that it's not for you. You're not supposed to be using it. Okay, it's hack software. Two, if you screw anything up, it's on you. Uh, three, the, high, the chance of you killing something, bricking your car, by just pulling the dongle out is very rare. It's like 0.001%, but you just have to be the 0.001%, okay? I've been using ISTA on two BMWs, various versions of ISTA, and I've used uh, power, uh, power supply units, battery charge, everything. And I have not bricked my car yet. I've had a couple of heart attack moments where I thought, oh, this is not right. Okay, so depend okay, so that's about it really. So either I'm going to make this a part one, and then I'm going to show you part two where I connect onto ISTA and show you that particular bit, or I'm going to tack it on. I'll just have to see how much I can this this video is. I don't know how long this video is. Okay, so next you're gonna see is ISTA.